Yep. Oh, we're live. Okay. Sometimes great. it takes a second. <laughs> hey, McKenna, how goes it? Good. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing all right. Awesome. Well, we are back. It's Tuesday morning, so that means it's time for another Tuesday tactic. Tuesday tactic. Um, yeah, so we're live. hopping on live, and it's a rainy day in Missoula. Yeah, I'm looking out my window now. It's, <laughs> it's kind of welcomed. You know, we've had a late smoke season here, so it's it's a welcomed rain. Yeah, I'm definitely not mad about it. Kind of getting into sweater weather is always a good thing. Right. Rain on a Tuesday when you're kind of doing some deep work is, is always a good thing. Yeah, this is, I think, like one of my only meetings today. So oh, kind of a heads down day with the rain. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so today we are talking about YouTube, specifically YouTube advertising and how to target your competitors. Um, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about this. I mostly focus on organic and email, and Kyle's the expert in this. So um, I'm yeah, let him myself take and Michelle over. <laughs> here at Pintler Group kind of manage the the YouTube piece. So um, YouTube ads are really cool. We we are really bullish on YouTube advertising um, and really video advertising in general, just because when you think about McKenna organic posts, you know those are getting through to the people that want to follow that brand that love that brand that engage with that brand often you have evangelists who are sharing and commenting but uh getting outside of that bullseye can be really difficult because it's just noisy you know i remember when facebook ads first came out the results were amazing you would show <laughs> an ad in the news feed and people would click on it and engage with it because it was so new uh, today uh, the news feed is really noisy with advertising um and even uh, paid search, you know, when you purchase keywords on Google, that's hyper competitive. So digital marketers have been challenged with finding sort of that next space to, to spend marketing dollars efficiently. And for us, we've seen success with YouTube, um, specifically top of funnel. And we talked a little bit about top of funnel mechanic. Can you refresh our listeners like what top of funnel is all about? Well, it's kind of interesting because on, on YouTube, we're reaching a kind of more of a specific audience of people that we want to see because it has targeting that we can, you know, reach the people that we want to see as compared to, um, you know, if you're watching your local news or you're paying for um, a radio ad, you're reaching a, yeah. a population of people, um, but maybe not necessarily the people you want to be reaching. You don't know exactly how many people you're reaching. Right. There's a lot of question marks with, you know, brand awareness campaigns. Where, mm -hmm. where a brand might say, well, we have a new product or we're new to a specific geo market. So we want, uh, we want to purchase radio or TV ads or billboards, which right. in some cases that, that can be really great if your target market is really broad or it truly is, you know, everybody who drives a car in Albuquerque, New Mexico, <laughs> a billboard on a highway might make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but with other top of funnel campaigns, th they can be really expensive and the problem with that is you're spending a lot of marketing dollars without knowing what your return on that investment is. Right. With YouTube, what's really great and with all things digital is we can report back and say for for every $100 you spend, here's how many eyeballs your video received. Here's how many clicks your video ad call to action button mm -hmm. received. And here's how many individual people landed on your website because of the video ads which is almost impossible to do if you're advertising on television or, or radio. Um, right. Maybe you could use a unique URL, but even that can be underwhelming. You know, yeah. when you're driving in a car and somebody's like, visit our website. Like, well, how am I going to do that? <laughs> yeah. So, you just never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Uh, so let me, um, let me share my screen. I kind of, and here we go. I'll hit Sounds share. Good. So what I want to do is really run through, um, what, what the YouTube dashboard looks like. This yeah. can seem overwhelming at first, like, okay, there's a lot of things to look at here. <clears throat> but the really cool part, as McKenna mentioned, is one of the things I want to do is show you how to target actually your competitors' YouTube videos. So an example might be, you know, we're going to use Geofly, a software that allows you to change website content based on location. But let's pretend you're a pizza shop in Tulsa. I'm picking some random cities here. <laughs> I know, I wasn't where are these coming Tulsa, from? <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma. You could actually target, you know, if you're Tony's Pizzeria, you could target Mark's Pizzeria's YouTube channel with videos that 
might showcase your pizza as, you know, faster delivery times right. or, uh, you know, more responsive to the toppings that you love. Right. Obvious benefits on targeting your competitors in that way. That's right. So with any paid campaigns, you know, and this is sort of YouTube 101, but, you know, very broad strokes, YouTube has an inventory of ads that you can purchase. So there's a lot of different placements. You've probably seen them before. There's skippable ads, which happen before a video that you're launching or that you're watching. Um, and then you might wait five seconds and skip it. Or if it captures your attention, you might, you might watch the full minute or 30 second video. There's bumper ads, which are actually non-skippable. This means that you are forced to sort of watch those that five second video. As a marketer, that's a real challenge because getting a message across in five seconds can be can be difficult, but also uh, keeping it simple is really welcomed sometimes to the end user. Yeah. And then there's display networks. Th these, these are a little more complicated, but this might be if you're on Buzzfeed watching a video and it's a YouTube video, it's embedded on a different site other than YouTube and an ad appears, those are, you know, those are like third party sites or uh, embedded videos. Mm -hmm. And then there's search ads, which when you search YouTube, you can see those on the right hand rail, specifically on desktop which are not a video you're watching, but it appears in search results. And you've seen this probably both done effectively and ineffectively. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you search for a video, like how to change the tire on my car, and the result is like pet food. And you're like, I don't own a pet. <laughs> I don't have a cat or a dog. Like that is not relevant to me. So right. that's where this screen really comes in handy is who are you targeting and how much money do you want to spend and where are those ads appearing? So... I've sort of fast forwarded a couple steps here and I'm in this, I'm in the stage where I am now selecting, you know, I've selected a video that I want to show as an ad. It came just right from my YouTube channel. And now I'm selecting, well, who do I want to show this video ad to? Um, so there's a few different ways to do this. You know, one is you can search for, well, I want to show this to anybody who is interested in like uh, marketing. You know, so I'm looking for like people who are in, in business, like, uh, let's see, who are advertising and marketing services. And this might mean, oh, they currently use advertising and marketing services, and they might be interested in the, in the software that, that is Geofly. Um, one of our favorites is, com is custom audiences. So these are audiences that that Google delivers to you um, and you can add a custom audience here where you can basically say, I want to target people who are searching the searching Google for things like geotargeting. Mm -hmm. um, and so just hit enter and now it's almost become a retargeting audience. Meaning gotcha. that, meaning that if, if Ted is searching geotargeting on his, on his mobile device, on Google, when he now gets back to his desktop and looks for a video about how to change a tire, well, he might actually see a, an advertisement about Geofly, which is relevant to Ted because he was just searching that earlier and now he's on YouTube and it's, it's, a, it's an impression that we pay for, but it's an impression that's really targeted. Yeah, it's and pretty convenient like that. that it's linked up to Google too, to do that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that YouTube, you know, that was obviously strategic by Google to <laughs> purchase YouTube back in the day. And so all of those things are linked. And you can add, you know, you can add many keywords and we recommend you do that to keep your audience nice and pretty broad. You don't want to go too broad. Like I wouldn't want to probably target, you know, anybody that searched marketing. Yeah, that'd be a lot. <laughs> that'd be a lot. And what you'll learn is that Google has no problem spending money. I'm sure. <laughs> they will cast a wide net for you and... Uh, and you'll you'll kind of you'll kind of regret if it's too broad. But we're going to do geotargeting. And I know originally we said, hey, we're going to show you how to target competitor YouTube videos. But I just want to show you um, custom audiences because that is really neat. Yeah, it's definitely important. Oh well, we'll name this geotargeting. Aptly named. <laughs> Target CPM, this stands for cost per thousand impressions, just one of those annoying marketing acronyms. But, uh, you know, we might say $5 here, which is probably pretty accurate. On average, 
we see cost per view, so single view of anywhere from two cents to like eight cents, depending on your YouTube targets. This is our ad. Uh, we've, we can put in some simple calls to action here, like a free trial and talk to an expert. Is that gonna be 15 characters? We might have gone over. Ah, we did, 17. <laughs> expert help, how's that? There you go. That should come in under. Okay, we're gonna name our ad so that in the future when we measure this, we have uh, simple comparables here. And this is our ad. Uh, a, B, test, image, because we've got our location A, location B. So I'm gonna create this campaign, and then um, I know we're kind of running up against the, the time here, but, oh, another cool thing is you can preview that ad. So if we attach that ad, you can see what that ad would look like. Oh, that's always helpful. Yeah, and you can see what it looks like in front of a video that you yeah. wanna show it in front of, which is kind of neat. Okay, so now that we've created this um, ad group, I am going to select, you know, this gets a little confusing because our audience is that custom audience, but then where mm -hmm. we want that video to show is our placement. Okay, gotcha. So and you I'll get to pick you. both. Yeah, you get to pick both. And sometimes you only need to pick one because if your audience is really targeted, then you don't need to really worry about where, um, you know, where in YouTube that, that video is shown. But I'll sh But let's check out placements because this is where you can actually target your competitors' YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. So for GeoFly, you know, some of our competitors would include companies like Optimizely or Cloud Engage. Um, we are, of course, better than all of them, but <laughs> really targeted on the geo geo points. <laughs> they they could probably do better with large taxonomy and personalization, but uh, this is loading just a little slow here for us, McKenna. That's a that's a Tuesday for you. Yeah, Tuesday internet in a rainy Missoula. Do you but, recommend running similar ads on YouTube that you would on Facebook or kind of mixing up your content for each platform? Um, that's a really good question. We, the thing about Facebook is you would have to have the raw file. So normally you do, but you upload the video so it's native to Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and we really like to run ads on Facebook that are under 30 seconds. Right. Really being considerate about the device type that you're targeting. So if we're showing ads on mobile on Facebook, for example, you know, and I'm scrolling through my phone, uh, I may or may not have sound on. So subtitles become a little more important on yeah. Facebook. Sure. So it might not be a different video, but it, it may just be thinking about, well, how is this two minute video going to appear on a mobile device on Facebook or Instagram versus uh, versus a YouTube desktop placement. Right. And you can, and you can, uh, decide sort of, do I want mobile or desktop? Gotcha. I've got to select an ad group, custom intent audience, the one that we just made. And so here is where we can select YouTube channels. And I want this video to show in front of any video on the Optimizely. Can you, how specific can you get? Can you say it's one specific video? You can, yeah, wow. so, um, which is really neat. And maybe yeah, Optimizely doesn't have a great YouTube presence. Let's just do, we want this to show in front of any video for Neil Patel maybe. It's a good strategy. Yeah. So if you're <laughs> if you're a marketer watching Neil Patel videos, seven hundred fifty nine thousand subscribers, now you may see our GeoFly video. Makes sense. Now I've complicated this because my audience will narrow this, so it's like only people searching for geotargeting <laughs> and watching Neil Patel videos. So I may or may not serve impressions, but that is a really quick look at targeting your competitors' videos, and I'll show you. So here, McKenna, is where you would do specific videos. Mm -hmm. And usually I'll just paste the URL of the video that I want to be in front of here. So easy. It's pretty simple, um, but the, really the strategy behind it becomes complicated because it's easy to say, well, I just want to show it to anybody interested in marketing. Right. And you spend $1,000 and you say, well, that didn't work. 
Yeah. So or, the strategy is a little complicated, but the execution is pretty simple. Yeah, execution setting it up is is pretty straightforward once you have your ads account built. So great. That's that. I'm gonna stop share. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kyle. I know we're running a little long, but if anyone watches this video in the future and has any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments and we will reply to you. Um, or you feel free to reach out to us on our Pantler Group website and um, check out our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of great videos there with a lot of a lot of tips. Um, so check it out. Cool. Thanks, McKenna. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. See you All next right. Tuesday. Yeah, see ya. <laughs>